Hello! Today's stories come from r slash malicious compliance. We've got three stories of peak malicious compliance today. First up, discipline me for being 22 seconds late without notice. Got it. Won't happen again. This happened several years ago because it was some malicious compliance that lasted for years. My former employer uses a points-based system to track attendance. The parts of the policy relevant to this story are tardy with call-in prior to the start of shift, half a point. Tardy with no call, one point. Accumulate enough points and you're fired. There's a set of train tracks crossing the street that leads to this facility. Occasionally, trains will stop while blocking this crossing. If you're caught there in the last few minutes before you're supposed to clock in, you have a decision to make. Wait or go around. Either way, you might be late. Sometimes you'll decide to go around and then the train clears the crossing and the folks who waited get in before you. Sometimes you'll wait and watch through the gaps in the train cars as folks who went around pull into the parking lot while you're still idling at a blocked train crossing. To be clear, going around involves taking a lot of secondary county roads, as well as a few field access roads. It's an extremely rural area, so you literally never know what kind of road conditions you're going to find along the way around. The roads may even be entirely unusable during the winter months where snow covers them. One night, during my years on third shift, I was stopped at these tracks and decided to wait. Eventually, the train moved on. I raced into the parking lot, used my keycard to zip through the turnstiles, and ran to the punch clock. My clock in time was 10.30 p.m. They have these biometric punch clocks that read your fingerprint to clock employees in and out. Sometimes these clocks just will not read your fingerprint. I got to the punch clock and it said 10.30. I'm golden. It doesn't track seconds. I entered my employee ID number and placed my finger on the sensor. Three beeps. Failed read. Tried again. Three beeps. Tried once more. Three beeps. Nope. Not trying again because by this time, the clock was likely to tick over to 1031 in the middle of reading my finger. When I got to my assigned work area, I told my team manager what happened. He said don't worry about it. He'd manually punch me in. I should have listened, but I'm a worrier. In the morning, when the front office people started showing back up, I went to the attendance office to confirm that my situation was all good. The office administrator decided to check my gate time and use that as the determining factor. I scanned my key card at 10.30, 22pm. That's a tardy, no call. One full attendance point to be issued. I reiterated that it was a train stopped on the tracks, completely beyond my control. She advised me to either leave earlier and just wait an extra half an hour for my shift to start on the majority of days, or else get a cell phone, I didn't have one at all back then, to call in with from the road next time. Well, what I did instead was start calling in absent, just in case something comes up after I leave home but before I arrive at work, in the evenings before leaving for work. The first few days, the attendance office up front was just bemused. After weeks, they became annoyed. After months, they'd apparently complained enough and I finally got told to stop. During the course of this conversation, they revealed that calling in too early before the start of your shift made it extra challenging to make sure the notice gets to the right numbers of management, because the message is no longer flagged as new by the time they're creating logs for the next shift. This was great news for me. From then on, every morning before leaving the premises at the end of my shift, I used one of their phones to call in absent for my next shift that evening. They tried to write me up for insubordination, but the labor union slapped it down, pointing out that the collective bargaining agreement specifies the time we must call in by, but does not specify a time before which call-ins may not be made. Cue the huge grin across my face. I never forgot that my team manager tried to do me a solid, though. If I was actually going to be late or absent for some reason, I would call that team manager's desk line directly to let them know. Even long after I finally got a cell phone, I continued doing this. I just call in on my way home instead of sticking around to use their phones after my shift. Found out years and years later from some union reps that upper management never got over this. Drove them nuts that they got beat at their own game by something so simple. It didn't bring the walls crumbling down, but it was a persistent, enduring source of frustration and impotence for them. And really, knowing you can manage all of that with just a 22 second phone call a day, that's the kind of thing that gets you out of bed in the evening. Edit. Probably the number one observation I'm seeing is that I should have just sucked it up and left for work earlier. I've commented this a couple times already, but so nobody has to dig for it. I usually left so early that I got to work before the 20 minutes prior to the start of our shifts that we were allowed to clock in. This stop train event was a rare and unpredictable exception. 
but the crossing was regularly blocked for a few to several minutes by a moving train, not to mention all the other random stuff that could come up on your way to work. 22 seconds, seriously? We all know it only matters when it's 22 seconds late and not 22 seconds extra work during a shift. Being on time for work is a totally reasonable ask, but to the second, come on. Let's check out the comments. There's a fun anecdote. Izzy the Pity said, I had a manager like this. I was outside hanging out before my shift. I think I still had like five minutes and my manager sticks his head out the door, looks at me and points at his watch. I knew I was not late because I synced my watch to the time clock. So I go about my day and my shift is over. So I put my stuff down and walk over to the time clock. Manager says, aren't you going to clean up? I just pointed at my watch and left. I didn't last long there. Adriana Starfish said, not only was it malicious, it was continuously malicious, which elevates it into the glorious category. That was a very satisfying read. Thank you for that. Someone replied, glorious. Not delicious malicious? The bald Ed said, gloriously delicious. Super Sarcosmic replied, it's deliciously malicious. Munch Kanita said, and now I crave lucky charms. Grumbly old man said, being maliciously compliant one time because the office dweebs are being petty that day, fun. Being maliciously compliant for years after, even when they beg you to stop but aren't able to punish you for it, priceless. And now on to our second story. Just sign this document that will dock you 11.5 hours. I'm a middle school teacher who speaks fluent Spanish thanks to growing up in the West Valley. Go Suns! The fact that I'm bilingual has given me many opportunities, including one where a teacher in charge of an English language learner, ELL, important acronym for later, program gave me the opportunity to tutor students twice weekly, plus an additional 15 minutes per every hour worked as prep time. Okay, cool. So Mondays and Fridays, I punch in 15 minutes before 2.20 during my seventh hour prep, then punch out at 3.30 when the kids left. No problem, right? wrong. At the end of the year, I get an email saying I'm being docked 11.5 hours that were punched in before the end of the day. I was livid. They claimed I'm getting double paid, but I looked through everything I signed off on and didn't remember seeing any restrictions on when I was to punch in for those hours. We met in the office and the district representative had me sign this document and she showed me the contract I signed. Nowhere did it specify when I was to punch in those hours. And I brought this to both people's attention who was present. But Federal Action Plan, FAP, office lady persisted. Just sign it. You can't get double paid. Enter malicious compliance. I signed quickly, this time using my middle name, which happens to be F this BS. It read O, F this BS, P. I happen to know the person at district office, district office savior, who will be reviewing this paperwork and know that she'll either ask me what's up or have me resign an obvious non-signature. Like clockwork, I got a phone call on my seventh hour prep from District Office Savior. She asked why I sign like this and why I'm being docked. I explained my working with the two new students who don't speak any English all year, even teaching them both English all year. I explained that no one said anything all year and that I had made the adjustments to get paid those hours the entire school year. She, District Office Savior, says, wait a minute, you were on your prep time, right? And you're bilingual? Do you have a cert? All answers were yes. My next paycheck was $3,500 more than my standard paycheck, coming out of the FAP ladies' budget for federal action plans. I was very confused at first. It appears that I can punch in during my contract hours if it is on my scheduled prep, and because I have an ELL endorsement, I got this endorsement working with monolingual students in the West Valley, and my direct supervisor on campus doesn't, I get paid as an ELL leader on campus. Quite the stipend. So what was supposed to be a $345 deduction in pay for me turned out to be 10 times greater as a deduction from their department paid directly to me. So looks like FAP ladies, right? I can't get double paid, but looks like I can get double quintuple paid. The comments make this story even more interesting. People more familiar with teaching hours and teaching contracts cast some shade on OP for double dipping. While I don't agree with double dipping, I do have to say it looks to me like the extra 15 minutes were serving as a tool to distract OP from the ELL premium they were entitled to. But let's check out the comments for more details. B4 said, You were certified. Paper pusher boss ain't. You got paid? Good for you. Stang F150 replied, Makes it sound a little sus, don't it? Like the paper pusher boss was a bit jealous, so tried to take OP's pay the opposite direction that the paper pusher boss knew it should really go. 
Wobbly Sauce replied, they went over the numbers to trim some fat, and it backfired, and now we're trimming fat off themselves. Elvish Girl said, you deserve every penny. I can't believe they tried to get you to clock out for prep time. Lurk Mode replied, they were clocking their extracurricular prep time at the same time as their contracted prep time. Someone replied, that's what it sounds like. I don't understand how anyone believes what OP was doing was possibly appropriate. It's bordering on fraudulent. No different to if someone claims for overtime for work they did during regular hours. Now for our third story. It's the shortest, but possibly the most satisfying. Automated my useless boss out of her job. This happened a few years ago. I was a data and reporting analyst and did all the ad hoc reports for the company. My boss, we'll call her Carrie, was a useless. She was one of those people that was always late, left early, and took days off at short notice. The only thing of value she did was all the regular reports, sales, revenue, etc. We suspected she got away with it because she was having an affair with her boss. We'll call him Stuart. Our CEO was a fairly decent bloke. He'd look for ways to cut costs and would pay regular bonuses for the best cost-saving initiatives. Carrie was very keen to submit ideas and encouraged us all to automate our tasks so she could try and take the credit for the savings. On one of her Skive hooky days, which coincidentally Stuart was sick as well, the CEO was desperate for the sales report my boss does. I said I'd give it a look and see if I could get it done. Normally, she'd spend two to three days doing it each week, but the CEO wanted it that afternoon. A quick inspection of the data showed it would quite easily be automated, so I knocked up the necessary script and got it over to the CEO, who was super impressed that not only had I got it done in a couple of hours, but also that it could be updated whenever he needed it. He asked if I could also look at the revenue, churn, and a couple of other reports. Over that afternoon, I automated everything my boss did. Both Carrie and Stuart were back in the next day, but were immediately summoned to the CEO's office before being suspended and sent home. Turns out the CEO knew they were having an affair, and all the times they were sick or late or had to leave early was so they could sneak off and hook up. He'd not done anything about it because how important these reports were. Now they were automated. He was able to get them suspended and later fired for gross misconduct for all the time they'd taken off. I also got a nice bonus out of it. What a delightful story. Let's jump into some fun comments before we wrap up. Someone commented, go away or I will replace you with a very small shell script. Wins at nothing replied, if that's not an insult, I don't know what is. Someone else said, it's a threat. Hot Lava Tube said, I've got good news and bad news, CEO. The good news is I've automated the sales report and revenue report using bots. Bad news is the sales report bot is now having an affair with the revenue report bot. Freedom Booger said, best part was the CEO recognized your work and gave you a bonus. Saved him a buttload of money for two employees. Top of the morning to you replied, would be nice if companies actually gave bonuses anywhere close to the value of the savings. Even if he got like a $10,000 bonus, it's probably pennies compared to the hundreds of thousands of dollars saved from firing those two. Dumbledore's Army said, I once helped save my company approximately $4 million versus budget over a one month period daily deep reporting on wages throughout the peak trading period. And I got literally nothing. The following year, I'm not even sure I got a full 1% pay review. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.